Mr. Bundy on 9-1. I know you got people for lunch, but he stopped by here on his way out, and I wondered if you had any uh, feeling as to how we could, could or should follow up or whether it's all settled. He talked to me as if he'd simply accepted the decision. He did uh, to me and was very fine, very warm, and he said that he had understood uh, before he came over here that this is what it might be. I said, well, now, that nobody knows you even coming to Jack Plenty and uh, Mac Bundy, neither one of them, I'm sure, uh, knew what I was going to say or had anything to do with it. And uh, uh, they, uh, uh, Well, he and I, he, he told me he thought this was it last night, and that's what he's talking about. Well, uh, I said, uh, uh, First, uh, I, I'll, I'll take. I'll give you it l longer after lunch, but I'll right. give you this rundown. I said I want you to know that uh, I've been concerned about a matter that's of interest to you and to me. I've given a lot of thought since the convention and Goldwater's nomination. I put myself in your place and assumed you were in my place and figured out how would I want this handled if our positions were reversed. I've concluded you should hear it from me direct first. Uh, I've reached the uh, decision that it would be inadvisable for you to be a, a, a candidate for the number two spot this year. My reasons for it are as follows. A lot of Goldwater's nomination. Uh, I, I uh, think that the battleground is going to be the border states, the states of Oklahoma and uh, Maryland and Kentucky and uh, the Midwestern states. I have talked to all the leaders in every state, either through myself or one of my Hinneman staff members. I've gotten their views. I feel like that this is not the time uh, uh, for you, uh, if you have ambitions uh, to uh, uh, lead the country, uh, to go after this spot. Uh, President Kennedy always wondered why, how I could endure it, he said. It must be very frustrating and uh, 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 that uh, I told him, well, I wanted to more or less retire from the Senate, and I certainly did. Uh, and I felt like I ought to do what's good for my country and good for my party and good for my state, and I thought the Democrat much more preferable than Nixon, and that's why I did it. And I said, I don't think that you'd be very happy there, although I'm not in charge of your happiness. Uh, presiding over a situation in the Senate, you couldn't do a damn thing about. And I want you to be happy and do what you want to do. Our objective is the same, carrying out President Kennedy's program. I'm going to pass 25 of his 35 major bills the first year. Next year, I'm going to pass the other 10 if I'm here and extend them. I've got his people uh, carrying on just like if he was here. I only have three people, uh, uh, George Reedy and uh, Bill Moyers and Jack Valenti and Walter Jenkins, four of them. And, uh, the other departments, Bundy runs his shop uh, even more so than he did when Kennedy's here. Earl Bryan does the same, Feldman does the same, Dungan does the same, and we'll continue that way. I want you to direct the campaign. I want you to do anything else that you'd like to do in appointing regional men, working out your relationship with them, or carrying on where you are, or going to any foreign spot to, that you would like to, or taking any place in the government that's available. I don't mean I'd throw a cabinet officer out, but I would try to work it out. I want to get along better with your staff. I need your help. I think you're brilliant. I think you're dedicated. I think that you're good for the country. I think you'd be good for me. We need it. And uh, he said, well, I want to help any way I can the rest of the campaign. I don't know what to do after that. I don't guess I could do it from where I am because I don't guess any precedence. I haven't thought the attorney general ought to be in politics. They'd say that I'm uh, supposed to be handling racial matters and out here running a campaign. But uh, uh, how are we going to announce this? I said, any way you want to. Uh, he said, uh, well, I'd have to think that over. And I said, all right, you can say that you're not interested in doing this, or you can say that I thought because of uh, uh, the circumstances that developed, uh, uh, the areas of the country where the battleground's going to be, that I ought to. Uh, give some attention there. He said, have you decided who it's going to be? And I said, no, I've decided several that I don't think uh, uh, fit in, and I haven't decided the ultimate, the one. Uh, I don't think it ought to be done until we get the convention. Uh, I think it ought to be done kind of like President Kennedy did. I said, that'd be very desirable if you could say at 4.30 that afternoon. That's what he did. Uh, I don't want to have any more uh, problems than already got. And uh, 
Uh, I wish you'd be thinking about Ken O'Donnell and Larry O'Brien and Jim Rowe and uh, these folks, what you can put them to doing, you can call in John Connolly. Uh, he said, who would you thought of succeeding me? I said, I don't have anybody, but he said, well, I'd like you to give consideration to catching back. I said, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, he said, uh, got up, walked to the door, and got the door turned around and said, well, I could have been a hell of a lot of help. To, if you'd asked my opinion, I would have told you that I could have been a hell of a lot of help to you. And the meaning, if he'd gone on the ticket, I assume. I looked that way, and I said, well, you are going to be a hell of a lot of help to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way I've outlined it. And then I had stayed the moment, and he smiled, and I smiled, and I said, a hell of a lot of help to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I would uh, not, I told him, I said, I'm not making any commitment. I don't want any deals. I don't want any trades. But I have no envy and no jealousness, and I want to make you look good as you can. And I think you can be much better understood and be much more, uh, get a broad experience. And I think this will be good for you in getting that. And I think a lot of people that don't understand you at all now will, will be uh, strong for you uh, 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 yeah. a short time down the road. Uh, I don't know really how to interpret it. I don't know uh, whether he felt good or bad. But Matching he, it to what happened when he, he came in here for a few minutes before and he came in here for a few minutes afterwards, I would estimate this is quite hopeful, really quite hopeful. Uh, I think he must have handled it just grade A because uh, uh, I wasn't, wasn't so sure. I was, he, I, I was cheered up when he came in. Uh, it wasn't time for me to call you and I didn't want to really much more than I was this morning when I talked to you, but I think you must have just carried on from running star. Uh, I don't think, uh, he said he, I did advise him beforehand that whatever his reaction, to say nothing in haste. And uh, he doesn't want, he's worried about being the chairman. He thinks it's a good way of running the campaign. It's a good way of making enemies, and that doesn't entice him. I said uh, that I, I, think, I didn't think that was true in the long poll that the measure was going to be who had done most to help win. Uh, but I don't myself think that his doing that is crucial from your point of view as no. long as he pitches in. In fact, I see some disadvantages to it. Yeah, yeah, they are. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. The main thing I want to do is kind of what you indicated the other day, that uh, whatever ticket he wanted to write, uh, he could write. Yeah. Well, there's any uh, doubt in my mind. To carry on for his brother, and if he wants to carry on for his brother, that's my job, and I didn't say so, but I have no intention of, of, uh, 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 of I'm doing anything. I'm persuaded he wants to be in the, your next administration, Mr. President. I think the t his saying the opposite to McNamara was simply that when you're hoping for one thing, you don't talk about something else. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't blame him for that. I what do you say to McNamara? Well, remember, Bob told us a week or so ago that he had said he wasn't interested in any job after November, mm -hmm. except this one. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. Well, I hope not, because I think that uh, I think he wants to be president, that's and I, I think I the him. best way for him to be president is Quite to uh, uh, and to be a little better understood. That's right. Uh, I, I I don't uh, I don't say this as a fact, but uh, I believe that of the 50 states. There were three of them that indicated that uh, they would like to, uh, uh, that some of their delegates uh, yeah. would like to be for him. I would say there are 30 that indicated that they couldn't go along at all. Yeah. He's got enemies he doesn't, doesn't need to have. No, and doesn't know about. And That's I've right. got them too, but, uh, yeah. but they, he's the one that's been decided in uh, yeah. Massachusetts, Wisconsin, uh, New Hampshire, and uh, maybe one more that uh, something from New York or not? No, no. Uh, the New York people that we think he has some, but none of them we talked to. They all said they'd do anything I want done. But these others said they'd do what I want.